Hey, we appreciate the good singing. We appreciate everybody being here. You pray for us tonight. That I've been working on a thought for this month and for the last few weeks on getting a grip. We first started off talking about getting a grip, getting a grasp, or coming to reality about our lives and about the things that are going on around us. And so you, you, you pray for us tonight. We started this morning talking that we needed to get a grip on our family. And you pray. I, well, there were some more folks here when I first sat down, but now they're not here. So you pray for them. Amen. Maybe this wasn't the right place. Amen. It's okay. Smile at me. It was just shocking to the preacher. We had seen folks that was here. Then when I got back up, somebody must have told them I was going to preach. So, amen. All right. Love the Lord. But we've been preaching, and we've used this plate. And I, I'm going to keep this plate. This is going to be a kind of a thing that I keep. It says, get a grip on my life, and before I can help my family, I first have to get a grip on my life. Yes, sir. I can't help my I get a grip on me. Yes, sir. Till I get a grasp on what I'm doing, where I'm going, what I need to be doing. Amen. That's the truth. Yes, Amen. Too many folks are trying to leave when they don't even know where they're going. Amen. Amen. Have you ever seen a time where they, everybody wants to leave? Everybody knows where we're going, but they ain't never been there. Everybody knows that can tell you how to raise your kids, but they ain't got no kids. Okay. <laughs> All right. But tonight, we started preaching this morning on the family and how important it is what we do at home. And Granny, I feel like that's the, if I don't say nothing else today, next month, or any time, I feel like we need that message. The way we conduct ourselves at home, the way we conduct ourselves in front of our family is the greatest thing that we can ever do. That's what we need to be a light at. Yes. Amen. Not just in the world, but at home. We need a light in our homes. Yes. Amen. Just because your kids come to church don't mean they get to see all the godly things that they need to see. Yes. Amen. They need to see God at home. Amen. 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 And I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Amen. And I'm going to say this. We'll get right into it and we'll preach a little bit. God's been our help and we'll go home. The devil does not always attack you at church. But the devil attacks us most at home. That's where we're at the most. See, he, at church, he only has three times a week to get me maybe five times during a good revival to get me at church. But he had, I go home every day. And he works on us in our homes. And we've got to get a grip on our home life. Amen. And we talked to the men this morning about how that we need to be as men. God has set us in the head. And I've got Bible for this. And if you want to talk to the preacher, meet me at the church. I'll take you to the third chapter of the book of Genesis where God told Eve that Adam would have rule, which means he would be the leader of their home. Say amen. 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 And I know that what I preach does not work in a world where uh, women live and where women are rising up and taking their rightful place and grabbing this and grabbing that. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I, hey, I heard a preacher say this. You can bring home the bacon and you can fry it up in a pan. But if you ain't got a man, you ain't going to stand. <laughs> you know what he said? Let me tell you what he meant by that. You took that bacon up and if you're by yourself, it's going to be lonely eating your bacon. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> But you will. It'd be, I, I didn't know what he was talking about either. But what I'm saying is, you can do all these things, but without that helpmate, wouldn't it be a lonely place? Someone to share things with. Someone to have help to do things with. Someone to, to be with. Amen? It's a lonely place. Tonight, we, this morning, we talked about Imelech being the leader that led his family away from God. Things got hard at Bethlehem. Things dried up at Bethlehem. Instead of staying there repenting and seeking God's will in his life, he loaded up his family and left Bethlehem and took them into the land of Moab, 
where there was idolatry and immorality and all these things there. And that, he took them there and set up <coughs> living space there. Immolat let us out of the house of God. I want to talk to you tonight about a man. You'll find him in the book of Genesis. And I might read and I might not. I want to talk to you, man. Emelette let us out. Lot took the easy way out. So many of us tonight are like Lot, Abraham's nephew. Amen. That he worked with Abraham. Abraham had brought him, had made him a part of everything of his life. Had given. Now let me tell you, when Lot left, he didn't have a thing. Everything that Lot has acquired, he has received from Abraham. Yeah. Yeah. Say amen. amen. Lot didn't have nothing when he left the city, eh? when he left his homeland. <laughs> Everything he has obtained has come from Abraham. Abraham has took him in and raised him up, amen, and given to him, uh, helped him to raise his family, give it, and he's got his own herdsmen now, he's got his own uh, livestock. Everything that Lot has has come from Abraham, amen. And when you look at Abraham in the Old Testament, he is a type and shadow of God himself, the Father. And everything that we have possessed, amen, everything that we have hey, has come from God. God. Amen. He, he took us out of nothing and set us over in there every time. Amen. Hey, I am so thankful tonight for what God's done in our life. Yeah. But there's, there's going to come a time in Lot's life and I, I, I want to read it to you. I won't make you stand, but I'll read it to you real fast. In Lot chapter number 13, in Genesis chapter number 13, amen, it says, starting with verse number 9, or verse number 8, And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right, or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Now, I want to bring my text from this 10th verse. Amen. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan. And it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Solomon and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord. Listen to what it's compared to. What a beautiful place. What a nice place. Amen. And like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zor, then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves, the one from the other. And Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners, before the Lord exceedingly. Let us pray. Lord, as we come to you just one more time, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for the blessings of life. We thank you for working with us, dealing with us, putting up with us, helping us, God. And Lord, I know that folks don't really understand that, Lord, that, listen to me, we need help in our homes. We need, we need parents to stand up and take a get a grip on their children and on their lives and on their the way they live and god we we pray god that you would help us and that you would give us the words to say tonight that we might be encouraging the folks that we might help folks to help themselves to help them ch their children god we love you now thank you for what you're doing in our church lord we thank you for what you're going to do in jesus name amen and amen Hey, listen, looking at Lot in Genesis chapter number 13, we find that, hey, listen to me, Lot and Abram, Abram are beginning, their herdsmen are beginning to have strife. And Abram is beginning to talk to Lot. And he, you know what Abram is saying, what he's trying to do? Abram is putting out the olive branch. He's trying to save the family. Somebody say, we need to save the family. Amen. Hey, listen to me. Abram is trying to uh, talk to Lot and say, we'll work this out. We'll make this work right here. Amen. But you know what? It takes work to work out problems. Amen. It takes our effort to get through things. Amen. Too many folks now are taking the easy way out. When trouble comes, Granny, they're not trying to uh, work through it. They're not trying to uh, get by it. Amen. They're throwing their hands up in 
the air. They're hollering, what's the use? They're hollering, what good is it? Why are we putting up with it? I just soon be away from it, amen. Amen. And Lot is showing us that when parents take the easy way out, it leads sometimes to destruction of their children. Amen. 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 Listen to me today. Lot, and listen to me. As long as Lot was around Abraham, Abraham made sure that there were altars built. Amen. I want to preach to y'all tonight, and y'all can either suck it up or we'll get, we'll go, but we got to hear this. Amen. This is something that we need to hear. Hey, the easy way out is not always the best way out. Amen. 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 I am well known for taking the easy way out. Ask my wife but the way I repair things. <laughs> taking the easy way out is what I'm known for. If you can prop it up to keep it from falling, prop it up. Amen, sir. Nobody else in here like that, huh? <laughs> Amen. If duct tape will work, duct tape it. Amen. Amen. It's the one that Jimmy ain't jumping up hollering. Amen. <laughs> Every time something goes wrong, preacher says, where's the duct tape? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> On the gorilla glue. Listen to me, but Lot has come, there has, in Lot, this is the first time that we read in the Bible that Lot, there has strife come up in Abram's family. The first time it's ever talked about, the first time it's ever mentioned. Uh, sure, they might have been some minor things happen, but baby, they saw happening now. All of a sudden, it's done got big enough. Somebody done got mad at somebody. Somebody done said something about somebody else's kid. Hey, Amen. Somebody said, you ought to do something with Susan. Hey, Amen. You ought to put a little Johnny up. Hey, Amen. And somebody done got mad. Hey, Amen. And now the strife is built up. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Somebody said that'll never happen to me. You better watch out. Hey, Amen. You, you hey, listen to me. Hey, all of a sudden we see Lot as he is here and all of a sudden the strife and the problems and the heartache of life have built up and instead of dealing with these problems, amen, Lot is choosing to turn his back on the things that are going on. Yes, sir. Now I'm going to preach just a little bit and we'll go home. So most of the time in our churches today and still a dealing with the issues instead of handling the problem. Amen. We want to turn our back on it and walk away from it. Amen. Our children are dying and going to hell, but we don't think it's a problem. Amen. We're going to take the easy way out. We're going to let the preacher or we're going to let the school teacher or we're going to let the Sunday school teacher deal with the problems that they are having. Amen. Listen to me. Nobody's concerned anymore about the family. Nobody thinks they need the family anymore. Bless them, right? Amen. Do you know our church is one big family? I, I want to drop a lock on y'all just to let you uh, maybe put a quarter in your bucket. They ain't but one church. They ain't a bunch of, hey, they ain't a Methodist church in heaven. They ain't a Baptist church in heaven. They ain't a Presbyterian church in heaven. They, they ain't a Lutheran church in heaven. They ain't a Seventh-day Adventist church in heaven. Amen. But what they are, there's a church that Jesus built on the rock that he established, amen, that the gates of hell could not prevail against it. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what, if you can't survive with the family, you ain't going, amen. Bless you. Bless you. I ain't, I'm not here to battle you who's right between the Baptist and the Methodist and the, and, and listen to me, and the Catholic, amen. Hey, ain't but one person right, and that's the word of God. Right. Bless you. Listen to me. But we're talking about people taking the easy way out just by turning their back. You know what Lot did to Abram? This is what he did, Granny. He said, it's been nice knowing you. Amen. But I'm leaving. I am tired of dealing with this. I'm tired of dealing with these people. I'm tired of having to look after these folks. Amen. I'm leaving. Amen. Yeah. Bless you. Abram. On the other hand, seeing the significance of keeping the family together. Now, I'm going to tell you what. Abram was able to take care of himself. Right. 
But Lot didn't know how vulnerable he was. I don't know if some of you have read chapter 14 yet. Amen. But Lot's not gone long before the devil gets a hold to him. Yes, sir. Captures him. Puts him into sh shackles and bonds. Makes a slave out of him. Yes, sir. Amen. Somebody said, and I'm talking about the family of God. Somebody said, I don't need that. I don't need my kids don't need to be involved with that. I need God because I need God to help me look after my children. Yes, sir. Yes, amen. Because they not only took Lot, they took all of his kids, all of his wives, everything that he had, and they locked him up. Yes, sir. And it all oh, look out. But Lot was known for taking the easy way out. Now, Abram said, now, if you want to go to the left hand, he is giving him a choice. Hey, he is giving him a choice. I, I cannot find it in the Word of God. Amen. But I believe that if Lot would have said, oh, I don't want to go to work. I want to stay here. And I want us to work through this. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I want us to work through this. I want us to get through this crisis that we're going through. And let me tell you something, there ain't no crisis like a crisis when there's trouble in the family. Yes, sir. Do you know when there's trouble in the family, family that is closer than, uh, uh, closer than peanut butter and bread can all of a sudden separate? Yes, Don't say here and act like they came. All of a sudden, you and some, maybe your cousin that was like this, all of a sudden, your ain't mommy and your mama is fussing, amen? And all of a sudden, he don't like you no more because your mama said something about his mama and all. Bless amen. 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 And if we ain't careful, there'll be a separation there. I got kin folks that don't come around. Amen. They don't like us. Amen. And it's not because, but it's one reason that we go to church. And when they can't come around and drink, and they can't come around and cuss, and when they can't come around and act like an idiot, they say that we're better than they are. They say that, but you know all we can do is say, come on, sweetheart, let's sit down and talk about this. We can do this. Bless you. But they don't want to sit down and talk it out. All they want to do is tell you how wrong you are. You know it's hard to work things out with folks that won't listen. Right. Have you ever been in that mood before where you wouldn't listen? Yes. I, I mean, see, I've been in that mood. Hey, ask my wife. These times I get where you can't tell me nothing. Don't try. Don't don't try. Amen. The only thing that happens is I have to run my course. Anybody ever acted like that before? Amen. I see a lot of fingers pointing. Amen. Amen, but listen to me today. Abraham told Lot, said, Lot, we need to work this out. I'll do whatever I can to keep the family together. We need men, women, boys and girls to do whatever we can to keep our families together, to keep them from separating, to keep them in the house of God. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. But Lot looked toward Sodom. And then now, if I would have looked, if Lot would have looked in a place today, amen, listen to me, when he looked at Sodom, he seen the green, grassy field. He seen a place that was watered everywhere. That had very much importance there. That means he'd never have to dig another well. Yeah. Amen. amen, that means he wouldn't have to do a lot of work there. That means he just sat down on the stool and do nothing. I tell you, I, I'm gonna, when I go home and pray tonight, I'm going to say, Lord, I said, you sure? Amen. We, and you know what? I'm sure that God is talking to us because in our future, the devil is going to try to bust up our family. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 But we have got to get a grip and to come to, come to know the importance of keeping the family together. Do you know that Lot does not see a need? He figures that this is Lot's attitude. I've made it this far. I can make it the rest of the way. But Lot has made it this far by the protection of Abel. Yes. A lot of folks don't see it that way. So many folks feel like, I look at what I've done. Look at where I have took myself. Look at, I have pulled myself up by my bootstrap. I have made something out of my life. Amen. The only reason that you're where you're at 
is because of the good grace of God. I'm serious. Like the only reason you're here is because Abram let you come. It's real quiet. But folks today are taking the easy way out. That You know what? So many folks today are sending their kids on buses. Yes, sir. And staying at home. So many folks today are uh, uh, just letting other folks mentor their kids about God. I'm serious. I'm being honest with you. Listen to me. I want to ask you something and nobody raise their hand. Hey, do you, we all know what a problem drugs are in America. We all know what a problem that alcohol is in America. We know that there's people falling to addictions every day, left and right. When's the last time you set your kids down and talked to them about those addictions? Yes, sir. We used to say that'll never happen to my kids. What makes your kids so different from anybody else's? Right. Amen. What makes your kids any different from anybody else's? Amen. I am telling you tonight that we need to take that we need to quit taking the easy way out at home. Yes, sir. Hey, we 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 took the easy way out. Do you know what? Hey, listen to me. We tell our kids now, just go to your room and play your video game. The video games have took place of instruction. Yes, sir. When our kids get on our nerves, we send them to their room to play war games, to shoot folks. Yes, hey, they, they wonder where serial killers come from, and our kids sit in their bedrooms and kill thousands and blood is flying everywhere every night of the week. That ain't got nothing to do with it, preacher. Well, what, who do you think that, where does that seed come from that enters the hearts of these men? I'm telling you, we take the easy way out. Yes, sir. What's hard? To set our kids down and explain to them why they should do right, why they should avoid? <laughs> they used to call it, now everybody get a hold of something. I'm going to get to something real, real sick. We take the easy way out. Now they have a class of sex education at school. You know the reason they had to have that? Because mamas and daddies started taking the easy way out. That's right. Amen. Get mad, preacher. Hey, man. Because you didn't want to take the time to explain to your kids what marriage was about, what love was about. Blessing. Blessing. That's what we spend our tax dollars for, preacher, to send them to school so teachers can teach them about the birds and the bees. Boy, if you thought it was quiet this morning, you wait till the night. <laughs> We're taking the easy way out. We're relying on somebody else to teach our kids the right way to live. When mamas ought to be talking to daughters. Amen. Amen. Now listen to me. Listen to me. I had two boys. And we've had a talk. Amen. It was just a long, not a dragged out thing. I said, you are in control of yourself. I said, if you lose control, it can cause you to have problems. <coughs> Amen. And if you, get, if you lose control and you come home with a problem, you're going to man up and take care of it. Yes, sir. Bless you. Yeah. That's the most politest way I can put it. Say hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Amen. Somebody said, what do you mean? I'm telling my children, my boys, amen, you go out, you get in trouble with some little girl, amen, you might not have to marry her because you don't love her, but you will support that kid. You will pay child support. You will make sure that he's took care of. Amen. I just tell you what, yes. amen, we need to warn our children that there's a price to pay. But we take the easy way out. Bless him. We tell them, the whole world is doing it, baby. Go ahead. Uh, God's going to send me somebody. <laughs> I'm telling you, every time I think there ain't nobody, somebody says, amen. Blessing. I'm being serious. Do you hear how serious I am tonight? 
We, we got to quit taking the easy way out, saying, I ain't got to do it. We got to warn folks about dying and go to hell, amen. Yes, sir. Amen. When's the last time you set your kids down and talked to them about salvation? Blessing. When's the last time you set your kids down? We talk to them about drugs. We talk to them about alcohol. But when's the last time you set them down and talk to them about being right with God? About where you're going when you spend eternity? We talk to them about what they're going to do when they get grown. We talk about what are they going to do when they leave home. Let's talk to them what's going to happen to them when they die. Blessing. We take the easy way out. We expect somebody else. Lot said, I'm going to take my family and I'm going down to Sodom. It'll be easier on everybody. Well, it was for a while. Say amen. amen. Let's read this. Let's look into this book. Amen. There's a reason that this is not wrote just because Lot chose Sodom to pitch his tent towards Sodom. It's, it's wrote to let us know that Lot left a good life for an easier way to live. Blessing. How many folks are leaving the good way for an easier way? Blessing. Go to church where the preacher don't care if you show up or not. Blessing. Blessing. But he'll send you an envelope so you make sure if you don't come, everything else will. Amen. Amen. Blessing. It's okay, folks. Don't get mad. God is just letting you know it's time that we get a grip. It's time that we met up and quit taking the easy way out and become the people that God intended for us to be. Amen. Amen. When we take the easy way out, we go towards Sodom. You know what he did? He pitched his tent towards Sodom. I believe when his kids got up in the morning, they could see Sodom. I believe when they took a breath of air, they could smell Sodom. Amen. I believe that Sodom would come to be a wonder in their mind. I wonder what's behind the wall down at Sodom. Lot never told them that there's death behind those walls. Lot never told them that there's the pleasure in sin for a season. Amen. Lot never let them know you walk away from God. There's a price to pay. Amen. Bless him. Am I making any sense? Yes, sir. Am I preaching anything? Am I trying to get close to, to where we're at today, to where everything is somebody else's job? Bless him. Hey, Amen. And we're passing the buck. Here, it's your job, Shane. You do it. What would you do? Me and you buddies now. Chad done got scared moved way back on his back. So he didn't. He's hiding behind Kenny. Amen. He I might go back there in a little while and tell him I know where he's at. Amen. But tonight you're sitting here. We're going to use you. Amen. Suppose, I know next Sunday's young folks Sunday. Oh, but suppose I come into church the next Sunday, the first Sunday in February, and walk up to Shane and say, okay, Shane, you do it today. I'm tired of it. Bless him. Get up there, Shane. <laughs> Amen. What am I doing? I'm taking the easy way out. I didn't study that week. I didn't pray that week. I have nothing for Sunday. And I'm looking to bail on anybody I come around. Ain't it amazing? We look to bail out on anybody when we don't do what we're supposed to do. Bless him. Bless him. It's society's fault. The reason that my family is the way that they are right now. I've got a little brother doing hard time in Alabama State Prison. Amen. But it's not society's fault. It's his fault because he didn't listen to God. He didn't take the instruction that was given to him when he was brought up. It wasn't because he wouldn't talk the right way. It's just that he chose to take the easy way. Bless him. Bless him. Preacher, you ought to have more sympathy on your little brother than I do. I hate it because he's down there. But I'd rather have him down there than get killed up here. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's okay. We take the easy way out. Yes, we take the easy way out. Lot says, I'm going towards Sodom. It's well water. It's well grass. There's plenty of stuff down there. We don't have to work for anything anymore. Do we not live in that age today? To where everything we touch is well water? How many of y'all will go to a well when y'all get home and drop a bucket and crank a bucket up like they used to do? How many of y'all will even go to the sink and work a pump? And Oh, look out, preacher. Amen. 
things are. How many of y'all, Brother Dean, when we get home, will have to build a fire so Miss Petey or Miss Cindy can cook us some supper? That's right. Bless <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Things have been made easy. It's so easy now. Folks have got laid back. We, we don't know how blessed we are. Most of us, when we go home tonight, hey man, we'll either run by the Dairy Queen or over at the Mexican restaurant or we'll find somewhere to go and we won't even go have to work to eat. We'll just go somewhere and get somebody else to do it for us. Bless you. Lot said, I'm taking the easy way out. Amen. I'm just going down there to Sodom. I won't get in no trouble down there. There's a lot more green, there's more green grass down there than they are up here. Bless you. Can I tell you where they were? They had to be constantly working with the sheep. Because see, Marcy, when you got that many sheep, you would have to move them from field to field. What Lot seen was a place where he wouldn't have to worry about his flocks anymore. He could just turn them loose and let them live like they wanted to. They was enough there. And that's what we've done, amen? Uh, we quit worrying about our children. We give them, we said, just let them do whatever. Now, I, 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 I'm going to hurry to get off of this right here. Because, like I said, I don't ruin, I don't want to ruin a good Sunday. Because y'all was real happy when you come in. 44 to 17. 44 to 15. Amen. And we was all ready to rise up. Bless, Bless you. But when somebody tells you you're going to have to stand up and be a man or be a woman in your house to your children and to your husband and to your wife, I'm not telling you to be mean to them. I'm not telling Do you know that boy's got whoopings and I've never once beat him? Amen. My daddy whooped me good. And you know, he I never call it a beating. I call it some things I can remember. I bet half of the kids in here ain't never had a whooping that you would get one day that when you got up the next day and you turned a certain way, you could remember it. Yes, sir. That's, a, Amen. that's a whooping. Yes, sir. And that only come from a little hickory where you take a hickory and you strike my legs and they put welts on them legs and they wouldn't go away overnight. Hey man, when you get up the next day, you rub the wrong way and them things would still burn. Bless him. Bless him. Yes, we take the easy way out. Go get in that corner over there, Jason. I ain't talking to you. I ain't going to whoop you. I know why. You just go over and get in that corner. Hey, I'm serious. That's what we do. We call it time out. Go to your room. Not explaining to them what they've done wrong. Not explaining that they are disobedient. Amen. Just get out of the way. Go to and there's a lot of folks that use time out. There's nothing wrong with that. But time out never worked with my boys. Amen. You send them to time out, they come back angry or more mean than they was when they got sent back there. Because you know what they said? All I'm going to get is stuck in this room. I'll nap to get it. Tell me I can come out and then I'll be ready to go. Amen. But you get a hold to them just right. Amen. And then they won't come out smiling. Yes, sir. But you know what the effort that was? That means I had to listen to them cry. Yeah. That means I had to play with children and say, why don't you love me? I'm going to call you back. Why don't, you know what that meant? That meant we had to deal with children thinking that we didn't care about them. Anybody get the hope of what the preacher's preaching? Yes. Oh, we take the easy way out. We'll say, just go on and leave us alone. Amen. But them mamas and daddies that used to care about us enough by the time you had a daddy like that, that didn't mind taking you around back. And if, it, if, it, if he couldn't get to the backyard, he'd whoop you in the front yard. He'd whoop you in the kitchen. He whooped you in the grocery store. Amen. I had folks, amen. Amen. It didn't matter where you was. Amen. I had a mama bless a little bony heart. Uh, she popped you no matter what she was or what she was doing. Amen. I, I seen her slap. <coughs> but we take the easy way out. You go on and do whatever you want to, son, as long as you just stay calm and don't cause a problem. And then we wonder why they're causing problems. Yeah. Amen. Please don't get mad at me tonight. But today we are getting a grip on this. We, we've got to get a grip on where we're leading them. And we've got to get a grip on how we're, where we're taking them. 
Lot took his family to Sodom. He pitched his tent. Never meant for his family to wind up in Sodom. <coughs> I don't know how my family got mad. Stop going to church. When's the last time you've been? Amen. See what I'm saying? I, Brother Larry, if Jeremy, if you want Jeremy to put God real in his life, he has to first see God real in your life. Bless him. Now, I'm just going to get down to where the rubber meets the road. And if we want our children to believe that God is first, then we've got to act like he's first. Blessing. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is His day. We've got to let our children know there's nothing more important than God's day. Blessing. Amen. Amen. That this day is not a day I go just when I want to go. Yeah. Amen. Do you know if God didn't care about us so much and didn't want to do a work with us, He would not send a message like this to us? Bless Him. Parents, uh, people that don't care about you are not going to try to instruct you. They're not going to try to help you. They're just going to tell you, just do go on, do what you want to. But Lot, when you left Abram, when you walked away from the family, when you forgot about your family, listen to me, sure, it was an easier life down towards Sodom, but your family was safer up at the house of Abram. Blessing. Your family was protected there. That it wasn't long after Lot carried his family away from Abram that his family moved in to Sodom. And when God got ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, because Lot took chose the easy way. Now listen to me. Listen. How do you know Lot chose the easy way? Because when Lot knocked on his children's door and said, God's fixing to destroy this place, they didn't believe nothing that he said. Now, preacher, you've got to show me Bible where they didn't believe his daddy. When Lot left Sodom, all he took out of there was his wife and the two daughters that were still under his subjection. I don't care if you believe me or not. That's all he left with. Yes, sir. Amen. He chose the easy way. He chose the way that his kids, amen, would have an easier road. Ain't nothing wrong with wanting your kids to have it better than you did. But what was wrong with what you had? Blessing. Ain't you proud that your daddy made you work? You didn't like it when you was growing up. You didn't think it was real fun when you was growing up that he took you out to work every day you wasn't in school, that he made you go beside him, do the things that you are uh, supposed to do. It wasn't real fun then, but ain't you glad he did that when you become a man, you know how to work. You know how to provide for your family. You know what to do, amen. Yes, amen. amen. But Lot said, I want my children to have it better than I. Some, sometimes we have to realize having God, they ain't nothing better than having God. Right. Sure, I have to work. Sure, I have to get up in the morning and go to work. Sure, but God is a great provider. God has blessed me. God has took care of me. <clears throat> Would you get a grip with me tonight? And let's not take the easy way out. Now listen to me. I, if you'll give me five minutes, I'm going I'm to go through something real fast. Amen. Uh, God showed me some men in the Bible. Lot, Emelech led his family out. Lot took the easy way out. And David decided to set this one out. That's okay, y'all. I know what God showed me. Amen. There's too many folks saying, I've done my share. Amen. I'm just going to sit down and let somebody else do it. I want to read you something real fast. Amen. Listen to me. I wrote this down because I didn't want to forget it. Amen. Hey, listen to me. Emelech was a, was a leader of his family that led him the wrong way. Lot took the easy way out. David decided to set, to set this one out in 2 Samuel chapter number 11. When all the other kings was at war, David decided to stay at home. He decided to set the fight out. He said, I'm, I've fought enough. Sure, David had killed giants, and sure, David had fought bears, and sure, David had killed lions, and sure, he fought Philistine. Say, man, David had fought the good fight, amen. amen. But he come to a point in his life where he said, I'm just setting this one out. 
In other words, I'm putting my sword up. What is our sword? That word of God. Thank y'all. Amen. That, that's our sword. And we've come to the time in the life of where we put our sword up. We got tired of fighting. We said we're going to set this and out. Amen. David stayed at home. And you know what happened when he sat down and quit fighting? When he quit, quit trying to work for the Lord? All of a sudden he went into Bathsheba. Y'all know the story. There's no use in going any deeper there. But can I tell you what happened in David's family after he decided to set this one out? Thank you. I want to tell you. Hey, listen to me. Amon, David's firstborn son, raped his half-sister, Tamar. Now, this is after David decided, I'll just stay at home. I'll set this one out. Yeah. His firstborn son raped his half-sister, Tamar. Uh-oh. All after David decided to set this one out. Listen to this. Amen. Absalom. Hey, David's third son raised up and killed David's first son, Ammon, for the, what he did to Tamar. Now the family that was a tight-knit family, the family that had been through so much, and the family that had seen God do such great miracles in their life because the leader of their family decided to sit down on God, all of a sudden their family is falling apart. Amen. Listen to me. The, the, the sons are taking advantage of the daughters and the other sons are killing them. Y'all ain't heard the half of it yet. But this is what happens when you decide to set it out. Yeah. Set it out and see what happens to your family. Set it out and see what goes on in your life. I'm not, hey, look, look, thanks so much to this. One day, hey, listen to me. I, I, I was going to go over to Luke and talk to you about the prodigal son. How did that father decide to hang on to the promises of God? That they... <laughs> Bring them up in the admiration of the Lord. Hey, listen to me. And there's so much in that. But that father, he did not give in. He did not bend. He stepped. Whatever the reason that son left, his father knew he would not be any more good to him until he found out who he really was. Amen. Help me. The cowards back in Listen to me. He didn't run and get his son by the hand and say, please don't go. Please don't go. Please don't go. He knew as long as he held him there, he would always have the temptation to go out into the world. Our kids are going to wander off. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes they wander off just to see what it's like out there. What they need is some families that will stay home and look for their return. Yeah, man. Amen. The old boy didn't give up on that boy coming back. Even though he was gone for a while, he stayed at the window go to the back door and walk up this way. Amen. Look at me, y'all. Amen. This old man fought the fight. He did not give up on his son. But the Bible says that he looked out the window and come on, Shane. And said he saw him afar. Thank you, Glenn. Afar off. You know what that means? He said he'd come a long way. He said it a long way oh, before he ever got there. Amen. I need some folks today, amen. I can get a rid of and see them coming back a long ways off before they ever get there. Amen. Touch him, Lord. But I need some parents that don't send it out. I need some folks that hang in there and fight the good fight. They even said, I'll set it out. You go fight. You go fight. <clears throat> Give you this little illustration. I used to smoke cigarettes years ago. Long time ago. Preached a Watts night service one night. Running into the church, running a little late. I always left my cigarettes in the car. Never took them in the church. Because you never know when one of them Baptist preachers is going to draw back and preach on cigarettes. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Amen. But that night I went into the church and I forgot I had them in my shirt pocket. Well, when with nobody looking, I stuck them into my coat pocket. Amen. 
nobody, you know, nobody ever see it. And this is the watch night service, amen. I was preaching for Buster Dawkins, amen. I'll never forget it. Uh, they were some great men of God there. And all of a sudden, Brother Buster said, Brother Frankie, we'll hear from you. You'll be our next preacher. And I said, okay. Didn't think nothing about it. Didn't have no problem. You know me, though. I got up there and God got in it. I got to preach and all of a sudden I got hot. I took that coat off. Going to sling it over there. And when I slung it, Marlboro's went all the way down there. <laughs> Bam! Convicted right there. I was just said, wait a minute, got my box, picked them up, put them back in there, and said, God has just showed me I don't need to smoke, and I won't smoke a nut. Bam, God took the taste away. I laid them down. I took the pack home, and I laid it up on the shelf. Amen? And I looked at it. The days come. Never had a desire for another. But about a year down the road, all of a sudden, I got around some folks that were smoking, and I smelled that smoke. And I thought, I wouldn't be good just to smoke one. And all of a sudden, before you know it, I started saying, it'll be all right. God didn't really mean it. Can I tell you something? God don't say something unless he means it. Amen. Let it go on. All of a sudden, I started smoking back. Amen. Started smoking. Then got brave enough to smoke in public. Amen. Folks knew that I had said that God had taken them away, but they didn't bother me. I'm still smoking. I was visiting one night. God spoke to my heart in church. And he said, all right, you won't listen to me. He said, but you know that boy you love so much named Matthew? He said, now, I don't care if you believe this or not. I don't care if you believe God does things this way. But Brother Tommy, he looked at me and he said, if you smoke another cigarette, I I'm going to take you. Bless him. Yeah, it's okay. I know the facts. Yeah. That night... I said, yes, sir, Lord, I won't smoke a nut. And as of that day, I have never. But let me tell you, this time when I quit, I still want them. This time when I quit, I still, I can get in the truck today. Amen. When God let me quit the first time, he took the taste away. Amen. But when I went back and started over again, amen, now I can get in the truck with folks and smell it, and it smells desirable. It smells good. But every time I go to think about it, God puts that boy that is 30-something years old, amen, in front of me and said, you remember what I told you, amen. I ain't gonna smoke. Bless you, Lord. Y'all won't do me that way. That's right. Yes, sir. I guarantee you that's the only reason I don't smoke today. Is because when I think about it, I see my boy Matthew. I see it. And I see God letting me keep it. God don't make deals, but God just told me what he was going to do if I didn't do what he told me to. God didn't say, let's make a deal. He said, this is what I'm going to tell you right here. Last thing. Amen. It's okay, folks. You decide to set it out. You decide to give it up. You decide to walk away from God and see what it does to your kids. You're right. Bless David's son, listen to me, Absalom killed his brother. Killed his brother. Amen. Listen to me. Listen to me. David's family now. Amen. David's family now is becoming to be an uproar. But it was David's choice to set it out. David said, and, and, and listen to me, and Absalom killed Amon for raping Tamar and he then fled to Geshur only to return and to rebel against his father. Y'all remember the story about Absalom rebelling against David. David had another son, his fourth son. Amen. That set himself up as king before his father ever died. And his plot was exposed by David, and David spared his life. David's kids even wanted to kill him. Huh? And all this started, Granny, is when David decided to set this one out. All this started when David decided, I'll just take a break. After David decided to set it out, listen to me. David spared his son's life, but his half-brother Solomon had him put to death. You remember the loss of David's child? The one that Nathan told David, said, the Lord's not going to kill you, but the son, your son's going to die. All this come after David said, 
I'll just set this one out. I'll just set it out. I'll just set it out. Folks, you don't know how important it is for you to keep on going. You don't know how important it is, not only for you, but for your children's sake. <clears throat> Amen. To keep on going. I, I, I love you tonight, and I don't want to worry your patience. Amen. But I, I, I want you to understand something. I found this. Mickey Mouse said this. Mickey Mouse, you know the New York Yankee Hall of Fame. Great baseball player. He said every boy child, every man could have been a major leaguer if he'd have had a dad like his. He said every boy if they'd have had a daddy like mine could have played in a major league. And the news reporter asked him to explain. He said, I had a dad that was never too tired to practice when I come home. I had a dad that even when I had a bad game encouraged me to go on. I had a dad that when I got the big head instructed me who I was. <laughs> and it was asked to Mickey Mountain, does any of your kids play baseball? And this is what he told me. My kids didn't have a dad like I had. My kids did not have a dad like I did. They did not have a dad that thought enough of them that he would come home every day and ask what was going on in their life. Anybody get some help tonight? Anybody get the grip on this? Hey Amen. Mickey Mouse said, if you had a dad like I had, you could have played ball too. My dad didn't get Mickey Mountain. Said, my dad didn't give up on me when I struck out. Oh, give hope to this. He said, when I when I go on a, a bad street and couldn't hit the ball, my dad would encourage me to keep trying. My kids, Mickey Mountain said, my kids didn't have a daddy like that. Why didn't they, Mr. Mount? Because my kids had a dad that was more worried about their pleasure, his pleasure, than theirs. Uh, he said, I was doing what I wanted to do. I was doing what I loved to do. I was not concerned about what my kids needed. So, tonight, Now's not the time for us to set it out, Zach. But now is the time for us to rise to the occasion. See, one day, yeah, you might not be here to see it. I hope I am. I hope you have two dozen. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Some of you will build another house to keep. This is too This is too but they're going to need a daddy that cares more about them than he does himself. They're going to need a daddy that cares enough about them that he's worried about their life and that he won't set this one out. But he'll continue to fight for what's right in their life. Where are you at in your life? Where are you at? Have you chose to take the easy way out and leave it to somebody else? Have you just chose to set this one out? Where are you leading your family to? This month's coming to an end. I won't get another opportunity. I've got Wednesday night. And that's all I've got for the rest of this month. But when we go into February, I want us to be, have a grip on ourselves and be ready to do what God wants us to in this coming year. We've got some great men coming for our revival. We've got some great men that will help us if we will allow them to help us. Amen. Are you going to lead your family to church? Or are you going to set this one out? Every church meeting you set out is another opportunity for the devil to lead your kids in the wrong way. 
Bless you. I know. And I, I, you ought to just look at me when I get in the truck. I get in the truck and I'm so worried about who I offended or who I made mad. But then I realize if you love them, you'll preach to them and you'll show them the right way. God wants to bless you. He wants to help you. He wants to do more here than you can ever imagine in your life and in your family's life. And it's going to start by somebody getting a grip. Having a grasping reality. Coming to understand that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. We stand to our feet. Brother Glenn, while you're sitting there, if you want to, just sing us a verse of amazing grace. Because we are here tonight because God's a marvelous grace. Preacher, now I want to tell my young preacher something. I thank you for allowing me to take these few Sunday nights and work on this right here. And we're going to get back to where y'all do Sunday nights. I ain't a jealous preacher, and I, I promise you, it gives me out on a Sunday morning. And, uh, come back on Sunday night. It, it, it sometimes it's hard, but I want you to understand something. I don't want you to take the easy way out. I don't want you to look and see the easy way and walk away from God. Serving God might not always be the easiest way, but can I promise you something? It'll always be the best way. Yes, Sing me a verse. Are you looking for a place to worship God in spirit and in truth? Hello, I'm Frankie Green, pastor of Trinity Baptist Church in Auburn, Georgia. We would like to invite you to be in our service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 with morning worship at 11. Sunday evening worship begins at 6 and Wednesday night prayer service at 7. We are a King James Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist church reaching out to those who need a special touch from God. For more information, you can visit us at TrinityBaptistAuburn.com or on Facebook at Trinity Baptist Church Auburn. We welcome you to Trinity Baptist Church where you will become part of a family.